So the Before trilogy was created by a man named Richard Lankletter, a man who clearly wanted to torture anyone in this world who happens to be single. Every day, I get a little more desperate, and desperate situations yield the quickest results. It stars Ethan Hawke and Julie Depley and depicts the relationship between their two characters, Jesse and Celine, throughout multiple years and multiple decades. The series is not only unique in its structure for how it tells its long-lasting story, but also becomes its own type of genre in a way, doing things that I've never really seen in a film. All three of these films center on long takes centered around even longer conversations that sometimes focus strongly on the central relationship, but at other times ramble off in the ridiculous and hilarious topics, which really plants these films in a sense of reality. I think this series is really great and I have a lot to say about all three of these films, so I'm going to jump right into it. So make sure to subscribe beforehand and also spoilers ahead for all three of these. I think this film is definitely the weakest in the series. It clocks in at under an hour and a half long, and I feel as though the film doesn't capture the awkwardness of the overall situation as well as I wished. In saying that, it's still pretty fantastic. Taking our characters nine years into the future from the first film and having them meet again after so much time. We watch as Jesse and Celine walk through the streets of Paris, rekindling the chemistry that made the first film so special, but slowly uncovering the massive barriers that have formed between the two. They have every single reason in the world to not be together. The first film feels like the world bringing these two people together in this type of fairy tale style manner, but this film feels more like the universe doing everything in its power to stop that fairy tale from taking shape. Which, in a way, kind of makes it more like a fairy tale by the end. Look, I don't really know, but what I do know is that the writing in this film is silly and good and are just so amazing, and the performances just bring so much life to it. The film breezes by, and by the time you reach the credits, you're reminded why you love the first film so damn much. I just wish they sort of committed more to the reality of their situation. Like, I don't think this film should have been more, like, overly dramatic, seeing as what makes the series so great is that it feels so unscripted in, in some sort of way. More like this is a reality show than a movie. Maybe that wasn't the best example, but you know what I mean. I just wish Celine and Jesse reuniting after nine years didn't just like kind of happen the way that it did. But overall, this is still a great movie. As of now, the final film in the series, Before Midnight, takes our characters yet another nine years into the future. Now in a long-term relationship with two twin daughters, this film displays the relationship that's on a brink. The barriers keeping the two apart in the second film are all but gone, but new barriers that almost make it inevitable that their relationship won't last have formed, creating an immediate divide between the two from the first powerful scene. This is the only film out of the three where the two characters are truly at odds, with Jesse and Celine discussing their future of their relationship, and their family and the optics of how or why it probably won't last. It puts love to the test, something that the first film don't really need since the love is so obvious and strong. Jesse and Celine resemble the old couple on the train from the start of the first movie, sort of mirroring the cycle of love that they are now in. My issue with this film is like the second one, it never fully commits to the idea, almost jumping back into the fairy tale the first moment it gets. I'm not saying that I want it to be like a La La Land type ending where love kind of gets thrown to the side at the end for the overall dreams of each of these characters, but the thing that I love about these films is how grounded in real emotions that they actually are, and I'd really like to see one more film where we really see the love between Jesse and Celine put to the test. I'm not sure if that's in the cards at this point, but for me, there still seems to be some unfinished business in the series. There's a clear and obvious story that could really be told in a fourth final movie, and I really hope they get to do it one day. Overall, though, this is just a really great movie as well. Before Sunrise Flew so the other two films in the series could walk. This is maybe the greatest fairy tale romance movie I've ever seen. So good, I was viciously frustrated about 20 minutes in, trying to book a train ticket to Vienna. Ah! It should have been me, not him! The chemistry between Hawk and Depley is so natural, and the filmmaking style of this film, which allows the characters to just live with each other on camera, doing long take after long take, and feeling so unscripted, allowed me to truly buy into the relationship that's at play here. It's not just the love story or the long takes, but the things that the characters are actually saying here. The writing is perfect, and some of the philosophical conversations in this movie between the two characters actually struck such a nerve with me. The film is immaculate in its direction, and just a fantastic idea from the creator, even if I think he's one sick man. Slowly learning about these two characters, how they ended up on a train, the circumstances of why they would choose to spend an entire day with a stranger, it all just kind of made sense when it probably shouldn't have. And as the characters slowly fall in love, the audience grows to care for them and root for their relationship. The ending of this film is also perfect, being so ambiguous and not promising anything to the audience or the characters, but leaving a glimpse of hope for everybody involved to sort of hold on to. If the series had ended here, I honestly would probably appreciate this film a little bit more, but it's undeniably still a 5 out of 5 and a masterful piece of work. So that's it, make sure to hit that subscribe button, make sure to turn on notifications. Follow me on TikTok, link in the description, I post shorts every single day on here and on TikTok. And just remember to try to have a good day today.